Hi there, I am Christelle from Diabetes Strong, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to check your A1C either at home or in a clinic. So I'm gonna take you through three ways of checking your A1C or your hemoglobin A1C. Same thing. So the first one is an at-home test, looks like this, the one I'm gonna, gonna do, and it's everything is at home, which you get the results in five minutes. So that's convenient. Second one is also a home test, looks like this. I will be drawing my blood at home and then sending this into a lab. So they say that I should have the results of my A1C test after about three days. So the third way is simply to go to a lab and get my blood drawn. So when I do that, they expect the results to be back in three to five days. So your A1C or your hemoglobin A1C shows you your average blood sugars for the last three months. So that can be a really good indicator of whether or not your blood sugars on average or within your desired range. So it's not an equal average though, in the sense that your blood sugars from the last two to three weeks will weigh a little heavier on that average. So people not living with diabetes generally have A1Cs of 5.7% or lower, but that doesn't mean that people living with diabetes should necessarily aim to go that low. So your A1C target should be in tailored to you specifically. So you should be working with your medical team and figuring out you know, what is the right target for you. So the American Diabetes Association, they generally recommend A1Cs of 7% or lower. That's about 154 milligrams per deciliter or 8.6 millimole per liter. But that doesn't mean that that's the right target for you. Maybe you need to be more aggressive. Maybe you need to be less aggressive. Again, it should be tailored. So I've been living with type 1 diabetes since 97, and I've had A1Cs from the high 8s to the high 5s. So it's a pretty wide range. And today I aim for an A1C of about 6 to 6.5%, but that's what works for me and for my lifestyle. If you want to learn more about A1Cs or maybe even how to lower it, I will link to an article on diabetesstrong.com where you can find all of those details. So we're gonna start out with this at home test. So it comes with a very extensive manual. Um, I can tell you I already done it once because first time it came out with not enough blood. Anyway, let's try again. So start out with this pouch number one, open that. Of course, prior to that, wash your hands with soap and you dry them. So my hands are really clean right now. So. Start out, so this is a Lancet device, so this is what's gonna prick your finger. So we're gonna start with that. Let's do that here, find a place where we know it bleeds well. Push it, and there's a nice blood drop. So I'm gonna do, so this is a little extra than they actually said in the manual, but given I got a faulty reading before, then you collect the blood with this, hold it over to the blood drop. You see that? It simply sucks up the blood, okay? So that should be, be enough blood. You can see the whole strip is full. Next step is to put this into the blood collector, which is this guy. So you simply push it in. See there, you can still see the edge. Push it in so it's firm. Okay, and then you shake it off. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Alrighty, and we're gonna put this to the side. So put it on the little foot. So that's gonna stand there for now. So next you're gonna get your A1C meter out and you're gonna open this next pouch. So this is a cartridge, okay? See this? It says G4 there, it says G4 there. So that's how it goes into the device. Pick up your device, simply slide it in. It's telling me to wait. Okay, so while it's calibrating, I guess, now it says sample. Okay, so the sample is in here in our blood collector. So what we do is we're gonna take it out, you're gonna take off the foot, squeeze off the foot, and then simply put that part with your, your blood sample into the collector. Push down, there we go.
and nothing happened. So let's try again. There we go. So see what I did wrong first? I didn't push this part. So remember to push that part down. That's what's going to release the blood sample. And now the countdown has begun. So it will take five minutes. Alrighty, and there we have our results. So it's telling us QC okay, which means that the test is good. And it's saying that it's an A1C of 6%. That's how that works. So next we're gonna do this at home test. So basically we're gonna collect the blood and send it to um, a lab that then will run the A1C and send it back to me. So this one also comes with a fairly detailed instruction. So that should make it easier to, to do. So basically what it tells us is wash your hands first. I already did that, they're dry. So next thing is, I'm just gonna put these aside. This one is open up the pouch. So let's just open it and drop all this stuff out here. Okay, that one we don't need yet. So these, this is basically what we need. So these are just bandages. If you think that you're gonna need that, that's, I don't think I'll need those, but we'll leave those there. And this is gauze. So open that one up first and just, you know, leave it here to the side. So again, your hands should be dry by now. So this is your lancing de lancet device. So this is what's going to prick your finger. You will need more blood than you do for a regular finger test. So be aware of that. So process here is prick my finger, squeeze that blood, just pour that into there until that little triangle turns completely red. Once that's red, I know there's enough blood sample, uh, not blood in the sample. If my hand sort of dries up and say stop bleeding, I can use the gauze to help, you know, help it bleed more, I guess. So let's try. So you open that up. Now I need to choose a place. So let's just choose here. Okay, put that over there and I'm gonna start bleeding. So that's a nice pretty blood drop. So we're gonna be like dripping the blood. So how to do that? Drip the blood into the, the container. This blood is sticky. So that's one blood drop. There's another blood drop. Kind of just keep pushing. So this is a good bleeding finger. You see there's a lot of blood. Still, the triangle is not, hasn't turned red yet, so it's still not enough. So we're just gonna keep bleeding. It's gonna be blood all over the place. Keep adding blood. I think it's almost turning. So I think, what is this, our fourth blood drop? Kind of looks like the, it's a big enough sample, just to be sure, let's just add another one. And I'm not touching the pad, I'm just, it's helping me get the blood drops off. So look at that. So now it definitely looks like the little triangle is full of blood. All right, I'm gonna use the gauze to just dry off my finger. So next step is simply put this away let it dry out for 15 minutes. So one five, 15 minutes. While you do that, I just make sure that nothing else gets on it. So while you do that, you can fill out the card, the sample collection card that needs to be filled out. It needs to then be put on this, um, sorry, it needs to be put on this pouch which is where the sample will go into. Once you have all of that collected, again, wait 15 minutes, you're gonna put it in a pre-paid um, postage, 
um, it's an envelope, <laughs> and just put it in the mailbox and you will get the results. So I've now had my blood sample sitting out for 15 minutes to dry out. Meanwhile, I filled out the label with my name and address. So next step is to cut open the pouch. Let's go, open that up. See, just leave that one in there that's to keep it dry. Put in your sample, close the pouch. Okay, and then you simply put it in the envelope. There we go. Seal that. And I then just drop that off in the nearest mailbox. I hold on to my little record number here so that I'll, you know I can trace my sample. So basically, I'm going to put this in the mailbox. Depending on how long the mail is going to be, it's going to be maybe a few days to get there, and then they want to mail me the results back. So let's see what they say. I finally got the results back from the lab. It took the mail two weeks to get to the lab. It only took them a few days to do my actual A1C test. and took another two weeks for this letter to end up in my mailbox. I did call the lab uh, after the two weeks and they gave me the result, but let's open the letter together. Nobody gets snail mail anymore. Let's see what it looks like, so. Page one is just saying, what are we doing? Here we go. Let's see if you guys can see that. There we go. So this one says 6.5. So I'm about to go get my A1C um, done at the lab. So I booked an appointment online with the lab. I got the lab work request for my doctor and I'm ready to go. So I'm done at the lab, I got my blood drawn, um, and you know, all I got to show for it is a little band-aid so far. Um, it took about half an hour, um, including check-in, spending time in the waiting room, and then actually get the blood drawn. Um, I should get the result in my electronic inbox in three to five days, so let's see what it says. So it ended up only taking the lab one day to process my blood work and send me my A1C, so that was fast. And you can see a screenshot of it right here. So the way that works is I went through something called Quest Labs. What they did was once they were done processing my blood work, they sent me an email saying, hey, your results are now available in your electronic inbox. I just log online and there are my results. So that was three different ways of measuring my A1C. Definitely pros and cons to each of those. Um, I think my favorite is probably the at-home test. I mean, you can't beat that. That was five minutes, didn't require a lot of blood, it's fairly easy. I did have to go through two twice before I got it, um, but overall, that was very easy. Second would be going to the lab, uh, especially if you need to get other blood work done, like I did that day, um, it just makes more sense. Also, I do really trust um, the labs. I know that there can be a little bit of differences between the labs, but um, you know that the quality is high there. Of course, then you have to get in your car, have to drive there to get the results. So that's a little bit more time consuming. You might also have to pay more out of pocket for going to the lab. I'm not super impressed with the, with the sample where I had to send it in and then get my results back. Um, just because it took so long, that's not, any fault of the lab, obviously, that is the mail system right now. Um, but also it came back 0.5 higher than my two other A1C tests, which, you know, makes me doubt it just a little bit. So overall, three different ways. Choose whatever is most convenient for you. Just know that there are pros and cons to each of them. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to measure A1C at home or in the lab. Give it a like. And let me know your comments down below with your experience of getting our A1C done. 
Thank you so much for watching.